Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today I'm just going to make this video and call it a quick take. It's not really very retro and I'm not going to do much editing so I apologize in advance for the crappiness of it. So I recently upgraded the computer I use on my bench. I call this the Trash Picked Lab Computer because I never made a video about this but this machine I actually found in the trash. It originally had an AMD quad-core motherboard with 8 gigs of RAM, I think. So I recently switched out the motherboard in here with one that has an Intel Core i7-4790K. The computer I was using before this had PCI slots. Then the AMD one that was in this case when I found this computer, it had PCI slots. But this one is just PCI Express. That's not really that big a deal, except for the fact that I was using this card in this machine. It's an Adaptec. SCSI card, it's actually a 64-bit PCI slot, but you can put this in a 32-bit slot and it works. This card actually works with Windows 10 64-bit. Uh, it's an Adaptec SCSI card 29160. So the fact that this actually has drivers still that work is really useful for me. I was able to plug Amiga hard drives into this and use them with WinUAA, things like that. So now I can't use this anymore. Or can I? So this stuff came today from eBay. And let me show you the listing about what this is. So it's a PCI Express X1 to dual PCI riser card uh, with a two foot USB 3 cord. Well, let's ignore that for a second. I paid about 15 or $16 shipped. So if you're looking for this exact one, just, just search for these kind of keywords. You're gonna find a whole bunch of these. The prices will vary up and down, of course, periodically. But this is the one that I ordered. And here are the parts. So this is what it comes with. In this bag, we have a little PCI Express card that has what looks like a USB port on it. And then in this bag, we have a circuit board. This has the two standard PCI connectors, and then it has what also looks like a USB 3 port. See that? Now, the way this works, and it seems all kind of sketchy, and I have no idea if this is actually going to work, is it comes with this USB A to A, USB Type 3 A to A cable which I'm assuming I plug into this card, put this in the computer. It has a notch there so the wire can run out the back. And then I'm gonna have this sitting like that on the bench or wherever. And then you take your PCI card and you connect it up to this thing. I mean, it seems all pretty sketchy, not to mention, I'm not sure which way this goes because this card can go in either way. It has a notch there, but this card is notched on both sides. So I'm going to have to look carefully to see which way to plug it in. Although, maybe this is the way it connects because that seems to line up correctly with the slot cover. <laughs> I mean, I suppose if I plug it in wrong, it's just going to blow things up. This cord apparently gives power from the PCI Express slot into the PCI bus. This has some other type of connector here. It looks sort of like a SATA connection, but I actually don't know what this is. So there's some connection here that does something. Came with a little bag here that has a couple little brass standoffs, probably to raise this up a little bit. I think we need to do that because right now as it sits, if I try to plug in the card, we got to raise it up enough so there's clearance so this can at least sit on the bench like this and uh, not interfere because otherwise the card might pop out. Uh, this is inside the machine, so just PCI Express slots. This is some fancy Gigabyte motherboard. I think it's got a x79 chipset or something like that i don't know it matches uh for overclocking it's really good for this particular processor and it luckily came with 32 gigs of ram i've already pillaged two sticks and stuck it in another machine that only had eight so it needed more ram but this machine is pretty over spec considering this is just used for you know burning eproms and doing other crap okay so there's the cable connected to the little thingy adapter i guess slot this through the back of the case and make sure it's in the notch, which it is. I have the power of the computer off. So motherboard is completely powered down. I stuck that into a PCI 1X slot. I'm gonna test this with my postcard here. This is one of those uh, cheap postcards. And um, I know when this plugs in, it goes this way, but I'm gonna power the computer up first without this connected, just to make sure there's no smoke. Okay, here we are. Oh, there's a blue LED on the little board here. So that's neat. Okay, so I know it didn't smoke. And let's see if we get some picture on the monitor here. Oh, AMI, hit Dell to enter BIOS. Okay, it's going to the BIOS. Yeah, I don't know if this thing ever takes, this takes a long time to boot every single time. 
I swear, it's it's not the most reliable motherboard. Once it's going, it's fine. But it seems to kind of hang up a lot. Okay, it's, it ended up working. All right, so let's plug this postcard in. Postcard, funny. Here it is, PCI bus. It only can go in one way because there is a notch. This will tell us if the voltages are correct. If this is in wrong and it blows up, it, these cards aren't expensive. I don't want to kill the SCSI card. So let's hit the power button and see. This will show voltages and we should hopefully see a postcode. Oh yeah. Maybe this motherboard doesn't support postcodes. I don't know. But we're seeing some stuff happening on here. That's a good sign. Flashy, flashy. So the monitor is powered up. So that's a good sign. So I think I'm going to plug this SCSI card in and see if that works. The Adaptech has a BIOS that shows up if, of course, the computer's seen it properly. And we'll try to scan the SCSI bus and stuff. So let's turn this on and hopefully we don't get the smoke out of here. All right, good sign. We got the blue light on there. No smoke. What I noticed is it didn't show the Adaptech BIOS, but you know what? I don't know if I have those configured, but look, hey, it seems to be working. So far, not so good. I looked through everything in my device manager and there's definitely, the SCSI card is not seen here. I don't know exactly, uh, you know, if any of these PCI to PCI bridge devices are that little adapter board. Okay, so I fiddled around with this, this thing on my main computer, the bench machine, and yeah, no luck. It, it Nothing I did worked. It, you know, powered up fine. Nothing was ever seen, no matter what I plugged in here. Windows never saw it. It was as if it just didn't exist. But right here on the bench, I have a Weiss Thin Client. This thing is old. It's a geode processor. I don't know. It's low power. It's got no fan in it. Anyways, it has one PCI Express slot in it on a little riser. So I have this thing plugged in with the SCSI card. Let's turn this thing on. Power light comes on. There's no fan, right? And we should see the Weiss logo pop up on here. There it is, Weiss. Well, it came and went really quick. And check it out, Adaptec SCSI BIOS. So this card does absolutely work and it just doesn't work on that machine up there. So I was gonna try this uh, VGA card next. Let's plug this thing in and see if it works. Move the VGA cable. There we go, it's all very precarious. VGA and SCSI is in there, I'll leave them both. And we're getting nothing. Could well be this computer needs to be configured to boot to the external video card. So let me try that out. All right, sure enough, there was a setting in the BIOS to allow external video card. It was set for onboard. So I have it plugged into the VGA card. Monitor is plugged in. Oh, and look, the monitor came up. There it is. It's an S3 card here. So right now we are running off of this card there over a PCI 1X link. Oh, it actually booted into DOS. Look at that. So we're booted and we're using this old VGA card. So yeah, this is actually working on this machine. So I did some looking online and I actually found the data sheet for this particular chip. So the chip, the main uh, root bridge thing, whatever that's on here, is the PI7C9X113SL made by Paracom. Here's a picture of this particular chip in operation, host processor, a root complex with a system memory, and then there's the interface bridge and shows various things plugged into a PCI bus. I am assuming that maybe this chip was designed to be put onto a motherboard that allowed the manufacturer of the motherboard to actually offer PCI slots while the particular chip or the North Bridge, South Bridge combination that's on there only allowed for PCI Express. So that's probably what this is used for. And this particular use is a little funky. I'm thinking that maybe the BIOS or something needs some support for these types of chips. And perhaps the one on my bench computer is just too new and doesn't have support for this. All right, so I was gonna say bad things about this card because I assumed it was either faulty or didn't work well or whatnot. Does it do what I needed it to do? No, not really. I really needed SCSI working on my bench computer. So this is not a great solution, but the fact is it does actually work. Just make sure if you're buying one of these, know that it may not work on your particular computer for whatever reason. If you have any experience with these, I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Maybe there's some kind of a setting I can configure to allow this to work on a new computer. I don't know. And I haven't tested this on any more computers, but 
this one here on the bench and my, my other bench machine that I didn't work on. It was just 15 bucks and it does work. So that's kind of cool. I give it a thumbs uh, sideways. Yeah, that's what my rating is on this thing. Anyhow, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down. You can subscribe for more videos. And we'll be back to normal retro programming with the next video. All right, thanks for watching. Good night. Bye.